A cannon fires a 75-kilogram projectile with an initial velocity of 150 meters. And it does fire it horizontally, so it goes this way. So all the momentum that it fires is, is going to be in the x direction. The cannon is attached to a spring because this thing is going to recoil back this way. Okay, so this will be the recoil. And this, of course, is the projectile being launched this way. Our job is to find the recoil velocity of the cannon and figure out how far the spring will stretch in order for the cannon to come to a complete stop. Well, we have an inelastic collision. In class, I call it a backwards inelastic collision. Typically, we have M1 V1 plus M2 V2 equals M1 plus M2 times some common velocity V. A question like this, we'll need to write this backwards because the projectile and the cannon are together initially and then separate afterwards. So it'll look like this, M1 plus M2 times a common velocity equals M1 V1 plus M2 V2. Okay, well it's a 6,000 cannon, kilogram cannon, I'll let that equal M1, so 6,000 plus a 75 kilogram projectile. They're both not moving initially, so I'll hit a zero there for that. Equals 6,000 okay, times V1, and we don't know what that is, plus 75 times 150. 150 is the velocity of the projectile. So now this is a conservation momentum question, even inelastic. So V1 would then equal negative 1.9 meters per second. Okay, now, since we found the recoil velocity, we go back up here and use conservation of energy. This one's going to be a simple conversion. Again, we're going to assume that there's no friction and no work done. You know, things like that are very simple then. So the kinetic energy is going to convert itself into the elastic potential energy. So down here, I'll write that equation. We'll have one half the mass of 6,000 okay, for the cannon. Velocity is negative 1.9, and we'll square that equals one half, the K constant is 10,000 newtons per meter. Another large one, but it is a cannon, so it needs to be very large. And then uh, X squared, and X will be the distance that it moves in this direction, thus stretching the spring. And solving for X, we get a value of 1.1 meters.